Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara and today we're creating a pull tab message card using You're Just My Type, Love Poems, A Little Mouse from Elfie Selfie, and Another Little Mouse from Wild For You. I created a frame using the fancy scallop rectangle and an outside in stitched rectangle stackable and there's my frame in white. This is the fancy wavy banner in chili pepper cardstock and the Let's Toast Poe Tab add-on and all the little pieces that go with it. I'm also using a pattern paper from Really Rainbow and Mermaid cardstock. So I'm going to start by stamping out all my images and I will be coloring them in Copic markers. So I'm using Lawn Fawn's Jet Blank ink because it's Copic friendly. And I stamped it out twice, but I just showed you once. And now I will use my stamp chamois to clean those off and put it back in the case. And I almost forgot to stamp out the desk. So there's the desk. And now I can put in some of the little details. So Love Poems comes with some words and so does You're Just My Type. And then the typewriter has extra keys for the top so you can customize your typewriter. So now we have it all stamped out and I'm gonna start by coloring the desk. And I'm using my lightest, this is an E31, and I'm finding where I want my shadows. So underneath the drawers and the feet of the desk, under the main surface of the desk, and I like where I have those, so I'm coming in with my darkest. This is an E39, and I'm just going to put in those shadows. Now, it's a small surface, so I'm going to really do a contrast between my colors. So I have the E31, the E39, and my middle color is an E34. So they're quite far away from each other, but that way I've got a real contrast in a small area. So I'm just coming back with my E31, blending everything in, filling in my lightest areas. And now with the E34, I'm gonna give those drawers a little bit more shading. And then I'll come in with the E31 and blend that into the rest of the desk. And then it's on to the mice. So I started by finding my shadows, but I'm showing you with the C2, the darkest shadows. But then I blended it all in and decided it was too light. I wanted more of a contrast. So I came in with the C3, and here I'm showing you where I'm putting in those shadows so that once I have that C3, I feel like it's dark enough and gives a good contrast. So I'm blending it out with a C0 which again is kind of far away from each other in the Copic family, but that way I've got a really good contrast. So I have my shadows where I want them in a C3, and now I'm blending them out with the C0. And I'll even blend them out a little further with a C00. All right, so onto this little mouse. I'm finding the shadows again. This is the way I've done each of the mice. And then once I find the shadows, I take that darkest color, which is a C3, and I'm just adding those shadows in. And I've got a light source from the upper right, so the shadows are in the lower left. Here I am blending it all in with the C0, so it keeps the contrast, a little C00 to blend it out to the edges and he's all set, except that I blended away a lot of that C3, and so I wanna come in and just darken up the uh, areas, the, the very edges. All right, so for our little guys holding the paper, I have put in the C3, blending it out with the C0, and then coming in for the cheeks and the ears with an R21. And I'll give a little R21 into the cheeks and ears of our other little mice up there, but not his cheeks. All right, 
<laughs> onto oh yeah put a little gray in those ears so now it's onto the light and it's such a small area i'm coloring everything with the c0 and then i will come in with my c3 and put in the shadows so inside the light and to round out parts of the lamp and then also um, give some shading on the on the arm of the lamp and the base and then blend that back out with the c0 so it looks a little rounded on the lamp shade part okay on to the typewriter i'm going through all of the little uh, the keyboard area and i'm taking my darkest color the c3 and then i want this typewriter to be red so i'm starting with my darkest it's so thin it's just a small area so i start with the darkest and then i'm not going much lighter here just with an r27 and blending that out and furthering that out to the ends and that's it for that but i decided that the inside needed a little more depth so i'm coming in with a c6 and going under the keys a bit and then down at the bottom of the inside of the the keyboard there <laughs> i'm calling it a keyboard but I, really i learned how to type on a typewriter in in class as a kid we had manual typewriters and and we had a typing class now the kids have keyboarding but <laughs> anyway now i want to take all of the coordinating dies and line them up on my little images and i'm taking this post-it note tape and tacking them down i'll tack them all down that that way i did the first one but i wanted to show you they are so cute even the little tails get cut out just with great detail i love it and then on the typewriter and i will also cut out the desk there's the desk and all the little mice and all the images that are gonna create our scene but first i want to cut off this paper on that this little mouse is holding he's actually going to be popping out of the file drawer of the desk so i'm cutting him down around his little paws and then i'll clip that line so that it matches up with the top of the drawer and he's all set i'll make this into a side folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card and so I'm scoring that and then I will take my bone folder and reinforce that fold there. The reason I want it to be a side fold is because when you pull up the pull tab I want it to be easy to pull up so I'm going to cut out a notch on the top of the card as well as the pattern paper panel. And I want to figure out where that's going to be and I realize it'll be right in the center so I'm going to line that up and this is the die that cuts out that top notch and you can see it has a nice stitching detail and just set it to the top and then I open up the card and I'll set it on the top of that as well run it through the die cutting machine and the notches are cut out I have to decide where I'm going to cut that slit for the pull tab. So first I want to put my little scene together and I'm gluing all the little mice around the desk. So here he is in the drawer and a very thin line of glue and that's all I need to get these to adhere well together. And I want to make sure that that typewriter is uh, giving that mouse enough space on the desk. So I slide that over a little bit and then glue on the lamp and all these mice from the different sets work so well together i find it so funny that they are using the typewriter i when i was in college now this is really this is dating me but when i was in college we had a, a computer class and we learned how to use the computer well i mean they actually told us what a mouse was 
and that it has these buttons on the right and the left and that you would right click or left click. I mean, that's what a computer class was <laughs> when I was in college. And now kids just seem to be born with this knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've got all our little mice around the desk, and the one that's holding the message, he's going to be popping out at the, as the paper rolls up on the typewriter. So we have to figure out where that's going to be. And this panel, I'm just going to put glue all around it and put it behind the frame. So I'm gluing that up, and then I'll just make sure that it's right in the center so all the little holes are not covered by the blue and then figure out where that desk is going to sit on the frame and I've decided it's going to be about there so that when the mouse pops up that there'll be enough space on the top and I'm putting a pencil mark where I want the slit to be and it's gonna cover it's gonna be covered by the mouse and then I'm going to also put it on the back panel so I'm making sure that my frame is in the middle of the card so I'm using my ruler to decide where that is and then I'll just put in a couple of marks and I will put that die back on there for the bottom slit and now I adhered that to the back and it's time to put the pull tab together so it's a Z fold so I folded it forward and then back and I'm going to reinforce those folds with the bone folder and again forward and then back and this is for that piece of toast from Let's Toast. But I I think I use this. I use this all the time. I love it. But <laughs> there are so many ways to make interactive cards with You're Just My Type and Love Poems, like with the Reveal Wheel or the Magic Picture Changer. It's endless. But uh, the Let's Toast Po tab add-on is, I don't know, it's a classic in my book. So I adhered the little mouse to the tab, and now I've got to decide. See, now he's going up kind of high there. You can see the bottom of the paper, and I don't want that because if it was being pulled up in the typewriter, you wouldn't see the bottom. So I just moved the desk up a little bit to make sure that would work. And in order to keep that pull tab from moving around, it has this little sleeve that you adhere to the back. So I folded the sleeve and I'm putting a little glue on it and closing that up. And then a little adhesive on the back of it. And then I'll slip that on the pull tab and down onto the back of my panel and adhere it there. And so that pull tab is not going to move from side to side. With the pull tab in the lowest position, I'm gonna make a mark on where I wanna clip that off so that it is flush with my card. And I just trim that off with a trimmer. And now I can add a few details to this panel before I set it on the card. Both the You're Just My Type and Love Poems have these great detail stamps in them. So I am using the click clack and ding to make the sounds of the typewriter show up on the back. So I had to figure out where those were going to be placed. And now I'll stamp those down in jet black ink. And then on the tab, I usually use that little arrow to point where I want people to pull, but there's this great stamp in the set, You're Just My Type, that says pull here, and it's the same kind of typing font, and it fits perfectly on this tab. I'll put on some adhesive and attach it to the top of the pulling mechanism. I have this card saying, have a mice day, but there are so many different sentiments that fit into that square. I mean, it could be a happy Mother's Day, Father's Day, get well, 
a valentine. It's very versatile. All right, well, I position the desk and I'll add foam adhesive on the back, leaving room for the typing paper to move up and down. So just removing the backing paper to the foam adhesive. And if I pull the mechanism all the way up, I can make sure that the bottom of the paper, the typing paper stays in the typewriter and it's all set. So just make sure it's all adhered down and time for the banner sentiment. And I decided just to use the inside of this fancy wavy banner. I'm using an anti-static pad and some clear Lawn Fawn ink and stamping that down. And then Lawn Fawn white embossing powder, just sprinkle that on and tap that off a little bit. Make sure that there aren't any stray pieces of embossing powder. And now I'll heat that up with my heat tool and it melts it to a nice bright white. Just a little note to say. And with some of the extra little pieces of foam that I had, they were such small strips. So I took off the backing and they were easy to bend to the shape of the banner. And then I adhered that on top and it's all set to adhere to the card. So I will put some adhesive on the back and I'm gonna put quite a bit on there, but nothing around that pull tab mechanism so that it moves freely. And I don't need any foam to back that up. It just moves freely on its own if it's not adhered down. And so I'm lining it up with the top of the card and pressing it down and it's all set to go. So just a little note to say, have a mice day. Well, these mice and I hope you have a mice day. Thanks for watching. Bye.